Hi, this is Janet with Paper and Spark, and I'm here with part three of the Shopify Seller Spreadsheet video tutorial series. In this final video, we're going to cover how to enter your expense receipts into the spreadsheet in these expense category tabs, and we're also going to talk about these light blue sales tax rows on the spreadsheet, and finally we're just going to wrap up how to use your spreadsheet and be consistent with updating it on a monthly or weekly basis. So we've covered how to import your Shopify sales totals and get all these amounts on these light blue rows, your Shopify sales, shipping, refunds, and sales tax info. We've covered um, how to find your Shopify invoice so that you can enter your monthly subscription fees, transaction fees, and some other charges that Shopify might expense you for. We've covered how to find the Shopify credit card processing fees and your PayPal credit card processing fees. The only other thing that's left is to enter all your other business expenses. So as you purchase supplies, pay for advertising, print your business cards, you need to enter all of those receipts, um, hopefully on a weekly or monthly basis, into your spreadsheet. Now, all the other expenses are either going to be entered directly on the white rows, like in the case of these custom expense rows, or receipt by receipt on one of the color tabs down here. Now, since the expense tabs of the Shopify seller spreadsheet work exactly the same as the expense tabs of the Etsy seller version of this spreadsheet, I'm going to just use the videos from the Etsy seller spreadsheet tutorial series for the next few minutes. So if you're wondering why things look a tiny bit different than your spreadsheet or why they say Etsy on them, then that's why. So don't be confused because everything I'm saying is still going to apply exactly the same way to your Shopify seller spreadsheet, okay? First, I want to note that for all your expenses, you should enter them as positive amounts. The spreadsheet already knows that they're expenses and they're going to subtract them from your revenue for you. So don't enter anything as a negative here unless for some reason you have a refunded expense that you want to enter. Keep in mind that you've got a couple of custom lines here. So if you sell on like Amazon or some other venue as well and you have listing fees for that venue, you can enter those here. And then you've got your product expenses and your business expenses and a few custom lines for your business expenses, not to mention the fact that you have another tab here where you can enter miscellaneous stuff. So I've got uh, a few of the most popular expense categories here. For all these expenses, you should just go through um, weekly, preferably, if not monthly, and enter your receipts into these tabs. Um, so the first step is just to determine which tab the expense applies to. If it doesn't have um, an obvious home on one of these choices, you can either enter it on the other tab or as a custom expense line. Um, once you choose a tab to enter it on, you'll want to enter the date, and it needs to be in this format, numerical format with um, forward slashes for the spreadsheet to work correctly. You'll enter the dollar amount, um, the vendor, a description if you want to, the source if you have multiple, multiple ways of paying for things, just to make um, backing up that expense a little easier and um, an other column if there's some other type of info that you'd like to track. Um, and that's pretty much it for entering your expenses. It's pretty straightforward. Now, one of the helpful things about this expense, these expense tabs, all of them do it. Um, it, it'll be even more helpful once you have, you know, lots and lots of data here. But you can sort and filter on these expense tabs. In order to do that, you would just use the um, any of the drop-down arrows right here. So if you wanted to um, sort, that would that shows your data in a certain order according to the input that you put in. So let's say I'm going to sort by vendor. Okay, so now I've got all my vendors, all my expenses in alphabetical order by vendor. Or let's say I want to filter. That means I only want to see certain data. 
So let's say I only want to see everything that I paid for Facebook advertising. So I'm going to filter to see only my Facebook advertising expenses. Okay, so now I can easily see where my expenses are going um, and how much I'm paying for them. And I can mess around with the data to be most helpful with me, for me. Um, okay, so if I want to undo a filter, I can just hit clear filter and now I get all my data back. And I'm going to keep things in chronological order because that's just what makes most sense to me. But that's something cool that you can do with the data that you enter on your expense tabs. I have a lot of really important um, notes about entering your expenses and categorizing your expenses on the PDF instructions for this spreadsheet that I encourage you to read. I'm not going to read them out loud to you in the video series because you can read them, but um, make sure to check that out. There's also a bit more information in the PayPal seller spreadsheet instructions about how to categorize your expenses if you have questions about that, um, which I know a lot of people do. But uh, my general rule of thumb is just to pick the category that makes the most sense to you and be consistent with it from month to month. Um, I will say that the shipping tab, you can enter any postage costs on this yellow tab um, that doesn't already include your PayPal shipping fees. Make sure you don't actually enter those twice because that's already included on this blue row. And remember that you have these custom expense rows that you can use for other types of expenses that don't seem to have a home elsewhere. You've got the other tab where you can enter uh, other one-off expenses. And that's pretty much it when it comes to these expenses. The only other thing that I will say is that your materials and supplies Remember to distinguish between inventoryable supplies and supplies that are not inventoryable when it comes to taxes, okay? For bookkeeping, you can enter any kind of materials and supplies here that you want if you're just trying to keep up with how much you spent each month. But when it comes to taxes, remember that you cannot deduct those materials and supplies that go into your inventory until the year you actually sell the finished good or the finished inventory made with those supplies. You can read more about that if you're confused about what inventory and cost of goods sold are. You can read more about that at paperandspark.com. Um, I've also got a free video there that explains everything about what inventory is. So just keep that in mind when you're entering anything on your materials tab. So these two rows down here are going to have a couple of helpful totals regarding your sales tax collected via Shopify. Keep in mind that all of the numbers tabulated down here are pulling directly from those imported Shopify sales reports. So you're only going to find sales tax info relating to your Shopify sales and not your sales from other sources. First, you're going to have sales tax collected. And that row is simply adding together how much you've collected from your customers in sales tax on Shopify. So this number is based on what you've set your shop up to charge your customers. It's not necessarily the amount that you're going to end up paying over to your state if you didn't do it correctly. I'm just adding together what you told Shopify to collect. Second, you have your in-state sales total. And this is going to sum any number that, uh, any sales total that had sales tax collected from it. So basically what I'm saying is, if there's a number in this sales tax column, then the spreadsheet is adding the sales tax amount for you, okay? That's what the in-state sales total is. Basically, my point is that if you have an in-state sale that has zero dollars of sales tax collected, it's not going to show up on that blue row, okay? Even though it was an in-state sale. So these numbers are only going to be reliable if you have your Shopify shop set up regarding sales tax correctly in the first place. Um, now, 
I would suggest that you refer to the PDF instructions for the spreadsheet because I've got some good info in there about sales tax, what sort of questions you should be asking, how you can make sure you're setting it up correctly, how to figure out whether or not you need to charge sales tax on shipping. Um, there's a lot of good info in there that I suggest you refer to. All right, so that pretty much wraps up everything that you need to know about your Shopify seller spreadsheet. So the goal is that every month you sit down with your spreadsheet and take some time to import your sales report from Shopify, enter the fees from your invoice, enter your PayPal fees if you need to, um, enter any other fees from any other payment processing systems you might have set up, and I'd also suggest that you enter your expense receipts on either a weekly or monthly basis into the rows or the tabs that you need to enter them into, and that way you can keep your spreadsheet consistently updated. You'll know whether your shop made a net profit or loss for that month, and you can keep track of how you're doing for the year on an ongoing basis as well. And if you've got your sales tax set up correctly, you'll also have everything you need ready to go for your sales tax purposes. The only other things that I will note is that this spreadsheet does use dated formulas, uh, so you'll want to make sure that you're using the correct year file for whatever year you're working in. And remember, I'm happy to give you future years upon request. Just email me. Um, and I'll also note that if you're looking for help dealing with the inventory side of your business, if you're reselling or you've got handmade goods and you're, you've got a lot of supplies and materials that you've got to keep track of and you're worried about calculating cost of goods sold for your tax return, um, I've got a special spreadsheet just to help you with that. It's called the Inventory Cost and Pricing Spreadsheet, and you can check that out at paperandspark.com. Thank you so much for hanging out with me through these videos. I hope that you find this spreadsheet helpful. And uh, if you have any questions, you can feel free to email me at paperandspark at gmail.com. Thanks. 